Hey guys, welcome to Halifax, Canada. We're over on the East Coast this time. We're looking at a brand new company and a brand new bike. So this is Zen. We're looking at their Samurai platform. This one is basically stock. It would come with fenders and a rear rack. Really done a great job on the accessories they chose. We took them off because this thing, it kind of doubles as like a hardtail. You can go off-road, especially if you swap the tires. Uh, I'll, I'll highlight some of the upgraded components here that make this thing extra tough in my opinion. So we have a tapered head tube that allows us to use nicer suspension. The stock suspension fork is a Manitou. It's an air fork. We've got compression and rebound, 15 millimeter through axle with boost hub spacing. So that gives your spokes a sturdier bracing angle. Love the tires they've chosen. Schwabi Supermoto X, they got the reflective sidewalls and they're puncture resistant. Back to the fork for a minute. Black anodized stanchions, just really nicely done. You can see the stem up here is adjustable angle, which I definitely appreciate. It makes the bike a little bit more approachable and comfortable for a wider range of riders. You can see that the top tube just fades right into those seat stays. Really nice, beautiful custom design they've done. See the gussets here and the extra welding to make this thing just extra sturdy. We have a couple different sizes here, so you can see the gussets a little bit taller on this one. And the bike comes in three colors. So we've got this electric blue over here, racing red, and they have a matte black. Four frame sizes. And adding to that, the hydraulic disc brakes have adjustable reach. So the stock brakes, they're pretty good, 180 millimeter rotors with dual piston calipers. And you can upgrade to quad piston Magura MT5 that have a brake light activation with supernova lights. Okay, that doesn't come stock. The stock lights are pretty nice. They're Lazine, pretty bright. And I love the headlight positioning here. They've got it up high right there at the front of the handlebar. So it points where you steer and it just makes you more visible to cars and stuff. So whether it's the reflective sidewall stripes or the integrated lights, I think they're doing a lot right. Great touch points here extra large pedals with adjustable height pins. We've got an Ergon saddle and locking grips, and they've got their own suspension seat post, which is really cool. This is another one of the parts you can upgrade. You can get the Connect suspension seat post. Both of these are 30.9 millimeters, by the way. I like that they even, they were pretty choosy about their parts here. It's a little bit longer quick release lever, so it's easier to do on the fly extra wide SKS plastic fenders. They interface directly with this rear rack that's rated at 25 kilograms, so 55 pounds. That's awesome. It's got some pannier blockers you can clip onto with a lot of the nicer pannier systems and a bungee loop at the bottom and interface for the rear light. Just everything here is great. And again, the custom frames, they have to have this cutaway here because this thing is using a Gates carbon belt drive. Gotta love that. We have the roll off. E14 electronically shifted internally geared hub. Here's the electronic button shifter. That's an upgrade that doesn't come stock. I think the default setup is really good though. We have Enviolo mechanically shifted continuously variable transmission with that infographics. You can see the little guys climbing a hill. That's like a low gear or flat. That's like a high gear. Excellent gear ratio on this and it's just very smooth. You can shift as you're riding, although I find it's better to kind of ease off a little bit. The mechanics of this system are really unique rather than being stepped like a cassette or an internally geared hub, you have this just smooth ramp kind of thing going on where there are these orbs inside and almost this teeter-totter effect. And this is the heavy duty version, which can handle the increased torque from that Bosch mid-drive motor. There's no derail you're hanging down. It's very quiet and clean. So if you were using this as a commuting platform, it's not gonna get bumped out of position at the bike racks. If the bike tips, it seems like it's gonna be pretty durable and it's just not gonna require as much maintenance as a derailleur and cassette. Of course, it does weigh a little bit more and this bike stock with the fenders in the rear rack with just one battery weighs about 57 pounds, which for a bike that's like feature complete with lights and everything, that's not bad. Of course, the weight starts to go up depending on the frame size you get. And if you get that second battery, this is gonna add another five and a half pounds plus the mounting track right here. It's really neat to see a dual battery option, especially with Bosch. So you get roughly a kilowatt hour of capacity. And I really like the Power Pack 500 because it's so light. You know, in, bo in both cases, you're keeping the weight low and centered on this bike. Uh, the Power Pack weighs about five and a half pounds versus 6.3 pounds for the Power Tube. Of course, it does raise the cost of the bike if you opt for that secondary battery. The stock price for their basic setup is $4,600 USD. It goes all the way up to roughly 7,000 USD. 
in all cases, you get free shipping to the contiguous US and Canada and the two year comprehensive warranty from Bosch. As with any bike, there are some trade offs. I want to highlight those real quick. I noticed that if you mount a bottle cage to the seat tube, it could be blocked and really not very functional if you opt for that second battery pack. Now, thankfully, the bike has two more bottle mounts up near the steer tube, but those actually double as a front rack mount, which I haven't seen the front rack. I think that's something that they're still working on. You know, worst case scenario, you could get a trunk bag with a bottle holster. They're using the spoke magnet rear wheel speed sensor versus some of the, the really fancy ones these days. They'll have it like right there mounted to the hub. It's just not gonna get bumped out of position. It's not gonna get dirty the same way. The charging port is right there. It's directly in the path of the left crank arm and you just have to bend down to reach it versus having it high and on the right side of the bike. Many e-bikes have this, especially with the Bosch system. I think it's just conveniently placed based on the wiring and everything. And I noticed that the cover, sometimes it's tough for me to line this up and get it seated, which is a little bit worrisome given the position here. It's pretty low on the frame where water and dirt can collect, but it is recessed, which is nice. And I think all their stuff's like IP56 rated or something. It's, it's highly water and dust resistant. I really like the new Bosch Performance product line. They're very lightweight, like six and a half pounds. The Q factor is, is narrower. They're a little bit quieter, but still very zippy, very high performance. This thing is measuring rear wheel speed, pedal cadence, and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. It does have shift detection, which is not as relevant for the Enviolo CVT, but I clearly noticed it with the upgraded Roloff E14. So to get the battery cover off, you just use a quarter or a, a narrower key and you twist to the left like this. The shield holds on pretty nicely. There's the PowerTube 500, and if we unlock it, so it bounces down into that first position, then you press this little button like this. I have the front wheel turned to the side, so there's a little bit of extra space. I'm gonna be careful with the stanchion. About six and a half pounds for this thing, 36 volt, 13.4 amp hours. It's got the little charge level indicator. It's the same charging interface that you use for the bike. And they include the four amp charger. This thing weighs about 1.7 pounds. It has a detachable wall side, which makes it more compact. I appreciate that. And the interface is just very durable and it's proprietary, so you're not gonna get mixed up. There are no dongles or anything like that. Bosch has always done a really good job with their chargers. And I love that the keys they chose are Abus. They're the, the kinds that you can match if you get like a folding lock or other accessory, so you don't have to have a bunch of keys floating around in your pocket. And it's the same key if you get that optional second battery pack. And maybe the last call out is you can go from the Intuvia grayscale display up to the Kiox, which is removable as the charging port. And this one works with the Bosch smartphone app. So you can do some motor tuning and you can do some mapping and stuff like that. With that said, I'm gonna go back and focus on the stock setup here for a minute. To turn the bike on, you just press the power button comes to life very quickly. It's a large, easy to see display and it's kind of adjustable if this thing is glaring. It is also removable and it has a micro USB charging port as well. I've always liked this display because it's easy to interact with. The button pad is, is very tactile. You can kind of hear and feel the clicks. It doesn't require too much pressure. We've got the same levels of assist you're used to, eco, tour, sport, and turbo. We've got a light icon and a light button, a dedicated button, which is kind of nice. I here and here just cycles through the different readouts. We got clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and range. I'm a huge fan of range because this display in particular, it has five bars on a battery infographic. It's not quite as precise. That's one area where the Kiox is a little bit better. I think it gives you battery percentage. And then with the app, you know, you've, you've just got a little bit more to work with. We got a walk mode button up here and I think that's pretty much it. You know, there's reset and you can get into some of the other uh, menus and stuff. I have a guide back at the Electric Bike Review forums, but I'm a big fan of this as is. Like this is this is a great setup, especially for someone who's going a little bit farther. You wanna track your range, maybe you have the two battery setup. I think they chose very well. It was nice to see what's possible just comparing these two different models. I'm gonna hop on the red one. We'll do some ride tests. You can see here with the Kiox, it actually shows how full each battery is. I love that. And as we navigate through the menus over here, you can see how hard the motor is working compared to how hard you're working. I like to test bikes in the highest level of assist just so you can hear the motor at its loudest. And then I can, you know, climb some hills and do stuff. I'm on a paved parking lot right now, so the terrain isn't going to interrupt the sound of the motor.
clear cutoff on that, just really nice. There's, there's no mashing, it's shifting seamlessly. It's actually a lot easier to shift on this one than the mechanical grip shifter of the NBLO. And you can also shift at standstill, which is nice. I love that they've got this thing set up just so well. You can see the little covering right there and all the electronics going back here. That speed hub from Roloff, that thing is, it's wired into the battery. So you don't have a separate battery you gotta worry about. You know, Bosch tends to be pretty peppy, lots of power up to 85 Newton meters of torque. And this motor, any of the performance line motors, whether it's like the CX or in this case, the speed, you're getting over 120 RPM. So I can pedal really fast, like shift down to a low gear and the motor doesn't drop off at all. Very responsive. No speed wobble, feeling very stable. I'm loving those 27.5 by 2.4 inch Schwabi Supermoto tires. They got the puncture protection. You can take this thing anywhere. The performance line motors, they do use more electricity. They're gonna burn through the battery a little bit quicker and you can hear the motor, but it offers just one of the most satisfying experiences uh, for mid drives that, that I'm obviously, I'm a big fan of this, whether you're looking at, you know, Broza or Shimano or Yamaha, Bosch is kind of the, the longest running, um, you know, yeah, higher performance motors. So it was a good choice. Good body position here. That that adjustable angle stem, it's actually pretty far forward right now. I could make this more Dutch. We could make it more upright if we wanted to. I feel like this is pretty comfortable. I'm on the size medium right now, and I'm about 5'9". I weigh 135 pounds for reference. Okay, guys, I'm gonna hop on, give you the third person perspective. Brake test. there is I was climbing and I was doing okay but the tire started to spin because we're on supermoto I mean these things are like kind of hybrid terrain they're not knobby that is a really steep hill the motor did great you know the 85 Newton meters I was able to actually shift I downshifted like as I was climbing get the lower gear pretty good is that speed test beautiful This is Ravi. He's one of the co-founders of Zen Electric Bikes. I've known this guy for like nine years. He's been very active in the EBR forums, knows all about batteries, always helping people. And I've met him at Interbike and other trade shows. That's right. So why did you start this company, Ravi? Well, Kod, I've been riding e-bikes for over nine years. Yeah. And throughout my PhD, master's PhD, I, I was riding my e-bikes to work. And then I realized there's a need for high quality, reliable, safe e-bikes in North America, built in North America. Yeah. And I thought, why not do it, you know? And something that we, are, that we can use it as a car replacement. And then I have learned so much from the EBR resource. We put all of the distal knowledge in this bike, <laughs> yeah. you know, something that is high quality, reliable and safe. That's exactly what we have done. We wanted to focus all our effort just on the one model. 
Yeah, you did a really good job that way because you know, there's tons of choices, but I can see that the platform is yeah. really solid. And I love the different sizes and, and just the attention to detail is phenomenal, whether it's like the, the bottle cage bosses up here that double for that optional front rack or some of the, the suspension fork upgrades and the different drive trains and things like that. I can tell you're a bike geek, right? Like it comes through when I look at all the choices that you've made and, and I really appreciate that. Well, thank you. It's been a long journey that we have taken together for like nine years. Yeah. Your resources have helped, helped us quite a bit and Thanks. you know, the belt drive certainly makes for a low maintenance setup. Yeah. That's something that you enjoy, that I enjoy. Absolutely. And I think many people would enjoy. Hey, so I'm here speaking with Ken and he's a customer. Why, why did you like the Samurai, Ken? Well, I I went online and I saw their website and I was really enthralled, I guess is the word, about the company owners. Yeah. Uh, Ravi being one who's, a, I understand, a brainchild in batteries. He's a good guy. And, yeah. and a good guy besides. That's right, right, right. And, and I looked at the bikes and I looked, basically what caught my attention was the belt drive. Yeah. Uh, I'm old. What? I'm getting old, okay? <laughs> and I don't want to be fooling around with chains. The greasy. And the grease yeah. and all that stuff. I want minimal effort. And when I started looking at the components, all the components are top notch. Yeah. They're oh, yeah. top notch. There's good value for the dollar. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to get it home. That's right. And, and you're local. So you're able to like, drive over to Halifax. I, and... I am local. And that's another reason I bought it because I know I can pick up the phone. That's right. They're helping. Tonight at midnight. And he'll answer. <laughs> Ravi will answer. So Very helpful guy. Yeah, so. Thank you for going on okay. camera. I, I really appreciate yep. it, and I hope you have fun with the bike. I hope it turns out for everybody. Take care, Take man. Care. Well, guys, as usual, I've had a great time checking out this new brand and this new bike. I'm, I'm really impressed with what they've done. I love all of the options, the different colors, the frame sizes, and as usual, I've measured this thing top to bottom. I've got all the specs back at electricbikereview.com. My goal is to, you know, just help you understand and then pick the right e-bike for your budget and your lifestyle. Back at the side, I have a comparison tool so you could look at this and maybe some more expensive or more affordable bikes. The first time I, I saw this, the Zen Samurai, and I started looking at all the components and stuff, I was reminded of some of the recent Mueller bikes, which also have the dual battery options and they've got like the belt drives and everything. Pretty fancy. It was neat to see a, a competitor and then focus on the speed pedal X stuff. I like that as someone who commutes. I'm glad that Bosch offers that. And you know, between their smartphone apps and everything, this is a really cool ecosystem. I also have some forums and it's nice to hear what people who actually own the bikes have to say about it. As always, I'm not affiliated with the company. This is not a paid review. There's no affiliate relationship or anything. Um, I just thought it was cool. So I flew out, met up with him and hopefully this has been enjoyable and informative for you. I love you guys, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.